part of the strange deli owner Raymond, the one who was robbed, was played by the flamboyant Greenwich Village legend Quentin Crisp, whose likeness, along with the likeness of other well-known people, is enshrined in Madame Tussauds' House of Wax, located on 42nd Street. Mr. Crisp was one of the first people in the world to publicly acknowledge his homosexuality back in London, England in 1931. And he continued throughout the rest of his life to proudly assert his sexual identity, no matter how scandalous it might have been considered back then. He immigrated to the United States in the early 1970s, and in 1976, he became overnight a national cult celebrity when John Hurt portrayed him in the television dramatization of his famous book, The Naked Civil Servant. From that point on, he continued to play small roles in movies, including the role of Queen Elizabeth in the film Orlando. But Barriers is one of the last films that he made. And I feel it is a tribute to his acting career that he was able to portray very well this non-transgender role. In fact, Charles Ricciardi, the writer and producer of the film Barriers, wrote this role especially for him. Working with Quentin Crisp is something that I really look back on as having been an honor. Um, this is somebody who, at the time, was of course very old, but prior to that had experienced so much in his life, so much um, conflict and turmoil, um, having fled his home country and uh, you know, coming to New York City, he was really just an icon. Um, and I have to say that I did not know a lot about him prior to his involvement in the movie. Um, I did know uh, that he had done some acting and that he was a celebrity and some of his background. And when Alan had told me that someone he knew had actually used him in one of their films, um, which in, which was a film about uh, a man dying of AIDS. Um, I had discussed with, I, I, my reaction was, well, maybe we can get him involved in barriers. And Alan's re response was a little apprehensive. He didn't think Quentin Crisp would really fit in this movie. And when you think about Quentin Crisp as who he is, um, sort of an icon in the gay community, and uh, you know, someone who's flamboyant. Um, our movie was ver is very straight-laced, and the characters we would have in play would be more kind of the, um, not more unlike characters he probably had played in the past. So I went to the drawing board, and I actually went back to the screenplay and did a little tweaking with this one character, the deli owner, and I... We, we, he sort of was an interesting character to begin with. He had a little bit of wisdom, and I, and I kind of, we sort of spiced him up a little bit. And I brought this and presented this to Alan, and he was intrigued by the idea. We sat down with Quentin, discussed the character, discussed the film, and he was all for it. So we were very excited to have him, uh, along with Andy Golden, who, you, you know, were people who were well known and also who had just brought very interesting backgrounds to the film and a little, well, with Quentin, a sense of professionalism and really a, a sense of dignity and respect. He was very gracious to everyone on the film. He always spent time talking with us on the set and, um, you know, when, some, when you're with someone who's been through that much experience, it's always an honor, and you can always get something out of it. Um, I, as I say, I really look back on that experience as being very lucky to have worked with him. Uh, he was a, a, a good guest because he was entertaining, and the people that I had uh, invited for the same evening were people that would appreciate his humor and some of the things he's done. He's quite a remarkable, a remarkable man, you know, having uh, known a tremendous number of people in the theater and having participated in many theatrical projects, you know, and uh, I loved his, uh, his bit in Barriers you know, which was kind of a different performance for, for him. Uh, most of the time he was 
rather elegant and uh, dressed. And Barrios, he was a, a, a shopkeeper, which was a, a whole different uh, ball game for him. But he was wonderful, yeah. Very, uh, uh, very nice uh, approach to uh, the entertainment field. My first introduction to Quentin Crisp is when I saw uh, the Naked Civil Servant on PBS, which was based on his book by the same name. And Quentin was brilliantly played by the remarkable British actor, uh, John Hurt. And I was so moved, especially by the last scene where Quentin, who has been so, had been so mistreated and ostracized in England, was on a boat and he was just an innocent flirtation though, of sailors that were just paying him attention and flirting with him and it was complete innocence but it was just a moment of complete happiness and bliss for him and after having had such a difficult life I mean that moment I found so touching that every time I thought of it and every time I watched it I was just dissolved into tears so when I found that Quentin was coming to New York I looked up his number in the phone book and he was listed we developed a very nice phone conversation. He told me he was doing um, a reading of his book, uh, One Man Show, Would I Come, of uh, The Naked Civil Servant, and I said, of course. I went, we chatted, we, I got his book, and um, I said, I'm Sandy. I said, oh, I'm so happy to meet you. And then we arranged for him to come over and have um, uh, dinner at my home. At that time, I was living in Chelsea. He came over in the winter time and I uh, had a duplex. It was snowing, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I had the spots light, spotlights out in my garden and I had the lights on the trees, I'll have on the green. So when Quentin walked in and he walked into the duplex level part and looked out into the garden, you know, with the lovely hat that he used to wear, he looked out into my garden and he said, oh, you live in splendor. And we went downstairs. That typical Quentin Chris. Oh, my goodness. And I had a wonderful chair, an, e an English Regency chair from the 1800s. And Quentin sat in that chair with a tumbler of scotch on the rocks. My only regret is that I didn't have a camera. But he spent the entire evening with us. My husband came home and joined us for dinner to meet Quentin. We drove him. He had an engagement later in the evening, and we drove him. And we stayed in touch by phone. Uh, then he called to tell me he was doing another one-man show based on his second book called How to Become a Virgin again. So I went to see that and then we were speaking on the phone. I said, Quentin, what does that mean, how to become a virgin again? Does that mean that at any time in one's life, no matter what has preceded, one can begin again? And he said, that's exactly what it means. So I went to see his second one-man show. Um, we stayed in touch on the, by phone until he died. But what mostly amazed me, I saw Quentin in every film he ever did. And he was always delightfully Quentin. But when I saw Barriers, it was the first time that Quentin was other than Quentin. He was playing a role, he was acting, he was playing a character other than himself. And that is totally due to the, uh, totally, the credit is completely due to the direction of Alan Baxter because I saw him do many large Hollywood feature films, but I never saw him as anyone other than himself. And this was the first time that I saw Quentin in a believable role playing a character other than himself, and that's totally due to the direction of um, Alan Baxter. When I met Quint Quentin Crisp on the set of um, Barriers, uh, I guess he was 85 or something in his 80s, and um, it was the dead of summer, hot summer in downtown New York, which can get pretty gruesome and sweaty. And on a movie set, of course, there's a lot of downtime, and I was grateful for that because um, I had known about Quentin Chris because uh, the actor John Hurt had played him in his life story, Naked Civil Servant. So I loved John Hurt and I loved Quentin Chris because I had seen him portray that character in the story of his life, Naked Civil Servant. So when I got to meet Mr. Chris years later, we started to discuss his life story. He did approve of John Hurt's uh, representation, characterization of him, which I was glad about. But I thought that because he was 80-something, he was so delicate and dainty. And as we discussed his life story, I realized that 
He wasn't delicate and dainty because he was 80-something. He had his whole life been that delicate and that dainty and that genteel and that flamboyant. And I realized how hard it must have been for him to be that out, we say out of the closet now. He just lived his life and he was who he was and true to who he was in an era when nobody did that. And I thought how courageous he was and how brave and how dangerous it must have been for him in Victorian England. So it's kind of great that he landed in New York because if you're a survivor and you're living dangerously, New York is the place for you, whether you're eight or 80. This is the apartment building in the Lower East Village where Quentin Chris lived the last 15 years of his life. And that was quite convenient for us because he was only eight blocks away from where we filmed his deli scene at 3 a.m. in the morning. And why 3 a.m. in the morning? Well, even though the deli owners helped us out immensely, as independent filmmakers, we were not able to make it in till then. But you know, if Mr. Crisp were alive today, he probably wouldn't be able to afford to live down here. And that is all part of the changing landscape of New York City, as well as part of the adventure of independent filmmaking, especially barriers.